How, how's everybody doing? Another rainy day. God, can we just see the sun? Just give me the sun. Well, see, when I used to tell Angel something, she used to always do this. It was never this. It always went sideways for no. No, I mean, what? I think they did a great job on it. Um, I, I think she'll be pleased. It's, de it's definitely not her passing. So, yeah. All right, what, what you got, Polly? Coach, I guess first off, uh, the status of uh, Dana and Elizabeth and the ankles. You know what? They uh, practiced for about five minutes yesterday uh, on, on, on the floor with us. I, I haven't seen them yet today. So I'll find out here when when I get to practice in the next 15, 20 minutes on on what on what their status is going to be. I I hope they're able to go, but um, it's something I won't force them into by by no means. Uh, that's one thing we've never done here, and I won't. If they tell me that they're good, they're they're good to go, and they're cleared through our medical staff, then they'll play. I guess maybe the reasoning on. This decision for you is that you're obviously going to want to have them available for the ACC tournament, the NCAA tournament. So uh, if they don't start, do, do you change anything when you face Boston College? No, we won't change change a thing. We're going to continue to do what we do. Um, you know, I was really pleased with how we played on Sunday at Pittsburgh. We didn't change uh, a change change a thing. We we just had kids step up and play well. I mean, Jazz played really well. Yasin played well. Kylie, Bianca, all of our seniors. We're fantastic. Um, Mikasa, she ran the team great. She really got the ball up, up and down the floor. Our, our transition was as good as it's been. So we'll continue to do what we do. Uh, but I know tomorrow night will be a definite challenge uh, with or, or without them. So I'd, I'd rather have them if possible. On paper, uh, Louisville has one of the best offenses in the league, or one of the best defenses in the league as well. Boston College. One or the other, it's got a great offense, not so great a defense, but last time up in Boston, it was a shootout. So what are you anticipating, and how have you grown defensively since that game? Well, I'm expecting the same ty type of game. I've got the uh, utmost respect for Joanna, who I worked with at Maryland uh, when, when we were both assistants there. She has great knowledge of, uh, of the game. She'll come in with a game plan. Um, I, I really respect the fact that, that, that she, you know, plans and, and strategizes for each game. It's not the same thing. Uh, that's why it makes it, 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 it interesting and fun for, for us as coaches because you know she's going to try to do something different to stop us. Um, we're going to have to do a much better job uh, of locating their, 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 their shooters. Uh, uh, Taylor Soule has been having a phenomenal two and a half, th uh, uh, three weeks of basketball. She, she's she been back-to-back -back player of the uh, week in our league. Uh, been playing outstanding. Emma, Emma Guy has, has had some great ball games in the post. Ky uh, Kylie's going to have her hands full there. And then uh, I think Gerard was the one that shot the ball so, so well against us up there, hit six threes. So we know that they can score the ball. Now it's going to be a fact of us being a little bit more dialed in. Um, hopefully we'll have Bianca, you know, cleared and, and good to go. Her knee's been bothering her some. So uh, I'll find out more, more about that tomorrow. And uh, she did not play up there. So hopefully she's good to go here for us tomorrow because she's, she's really our leader at the, de 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 at the defensive end of the floor. Uh, she tells everybody where they're supposed to go and ju just does a great job with that for us. Coach, I'm, Coach, I'm, I'm sure obviously they know, the girls know that you have a chance to clinch out right. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you play that up with them at all or just kind of let, let, let that go for them? No, we, we understand what's at stake. I mean, it's, it's definitely a chance to, to win the league outright, which is, you know, something that, that we've talked about through, throughout the year. Uh, but at the same time, it's also just an important game for the fact of, of seeding, you know, for the NCAA tournament. So every game matters to us. I've said it through, throughout the year. We're, we're a good basketball team, but we're not one that can look past anyone. You just look at our scores throughout our ACC, and, and, we, and, and we've had some, some really good games. Our game up there at Boston College was, was a great game. So 
we'll, we'll have our hands full, and we're aware of that. Hopefully, we'll be as close to a, a, a hundred percent health wise tomorrow, and availability because that's that's one thing. When you've got Dana and e Elizabeth out, our rotation gets really really thin. You talked after the last game about having talked to your seniors and how important they were going to be with those two players missing, but the rest of this run, how much will their kind of ownership lead into success if, from here on? I mean, Well, it's going to be big. I mean, you know, that's the one thing. We have had great se senior leadership uh, for the past four or five years here. And when your seniors are taking things personally and, you know, are fully committed and invested, they hold every, everybody else accountable. And that's what we need. And that's where B Bianca is so valuable for us. Uh, she isn't afraid, afraid to get on anybody, uh, challenge them, make sure they know what they're doing. And that's what you have to have. She's got some toughness to her um, that I, I, I just can't replace on, the, on that floor right now. Uh, with last season, with such a stellar senior class, and then this season, it's kind of ridiculous to think that this senior class is on the cusp of becoming the winningest senior class overall. Uh, what's it been like seeing the development just of those seniors in general, and then kind of the pivot from having Asia Durer and then coming to this senior class and realizing, oh, wait, we have even more talent than we thought we did, maybe? Well, no, I mean, we knew what talent we had. Uh, it's just a matter of players taking that next step in, the, in evolution of their game. Uh, Ky Kylie's been a process for four years. She's been a process th this season. You've seen growth from her as this year is gone. And I've just been really, really impressed with what she's been able to do for us at the defensive end of the floor. But even right now, offensively, she's starting to give us that boost that she was actually probably – well, she was. She was shooting the ball better from the three-point line as a freshman than she has right now. But the past few ball games, I think she's got that confidence back. And if she can continue to, to, to give us that outside shot and then her, her, her presence defensively in the post, it really makes, makes us a lot more difficult to, to, to beat. And then you've got Bianca, who from freshman year to senior year, I mean, she'll tell you we were the only d d Division I scholarship offer she had. And I think it's pretty amazing to, to sit there and look at what she's been able to accomplish. Um, you know, I've got to give my staff, Sam Williams is the one that first saw, I, I think, Bianca and was like, you know, I just love how this kid competes, how she runs the floor. And then she's put the work in. Um, she went from a, a, a freshman and sophomore that struggled from 15 feet and in to where now if she's got that elbow j j jump shot or that eight-footer eight, eight footer in the short corner, it's as good of a, a, as a layup for her. So really been impressed what what she's been doing this year. Then you've got Jazz, who you know I talked to Jazz on on Sunday and said, "Listen, you're the you're the best player on, on this floor in this game. So act like it." And I, I I thought she did. She's really stepped up to the challenge, and that's one thing as a, a senior, you know, as a underclassman, it's it's easier because all the pressure is on the older kids. You know, so if you go out there and, and do your job, you kind of can slide un underneath the, the 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 radar. But as a senior, Jazz knows, hey, everybody knows how how talented she is, and she's got to continue to do the same thing for us for the rest of this season. And then Jess, uh, you know, just really excited for her. I mean, she played really well at Pittsburgh. If she could make a free throw, she she would have had ten. Um, you know, and I give her grief a, 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 about that. But she's one that can go all week and practice on the scout squad for me. And, you know, she'll be whoever we ask her to be. And then I can put her in during the game. And I have no doubt that she knows the scout and report front and back. She knows exactly what we're trying to do, which is not easy. Because, you know, when you're always playing the other opponent – on the floor during practice, and then all of a sudden you're thrown on the defensive side of it to now you're guarding it. Sure, it's easy to guard the person that you've been, but it's knowing what you're doing on everybody else. And Jess has really done a fantastic job. And uh, I'm really proud of, the, the, of what she's become, not just as a basketball player, but, uh, but as a person. When you look at, you have obviously the number one seed in the, in the ACC tournament already. 
Do you ever start looking or thinking or worrying about positioning for the NCAA tournament? I know in the past it's kind of worked itself out. Do you ever even talk about that with them? No, well, we, uh, we talk to them with them. I mean, there, there's no question about that. We sit there and explain to them the importance of each game, uh, what it means for NCAA seeding, and also for the fact of, you know, our past two years we've, we've been co-ACC champs. And it'd be nice to be outright champs, but we have to take care of business. We got to win this the, the, this ball game on Thursday night, and then, you know, if we're fortunate enough to do that, then it's it's Senior Day on Sunday. So there there's a lot to play for, and we know that um, we're not necessarily playing for an ACC tournament seed right now, but we're playing for an NCAA tournament seed, and you're playing for what kind of momentum do you want to have going into your conference tournament? You know, do you, do you, do you want to be backing the, uh, the, the car in or pulling forward? And uh, we have talked to our kids about that. You mentioned knowing the talent you had coming in here. Um, you, you just need players to take that next step. How much do you feel like the success or even the runs you guys have had in the last few years helped groom these seniors for, for this moment this year? Well, I think it's, it's been really important. I, I think for all of our players, as you go year in and year out and continue to have su the success that we've had, your freshmen see, okay, this is what's expected of me. Your sophomores are seeing that next step. And it's just an, ev an evolution. You go from being a freshman where nobody really knows what you're capable of doing. Sure, you've had a good high school career. You've done some great things. But going from high, high school to college is a big jump. And then you've got some upperclassmen that are going to help you by having the opportunity to have been here for three or four, you know, three years, four years. And you don't have all that pressure on you to have to, have to go out and score 20. And I, I think they've all learned from a lot of our past players that by the time you get up to being a senior, it's your turn to lead. And that's one thing that I take great pride in, that, that we have a program that I don't worry about the next group that comes through because our upperclassmen are helping teach them what's expected here. When you guys did face some adversity this season, whether it was losses or, you know, injuries, stuff like that, are, who, who, who steps up really to, to lead in those moments? Is it something that you guys as a staff kind of have to coax them about, or is there, you know, someone specific who kind of is always that, that bug in their teammates here? Well, it's our job as coaches. I mean, when there's adversity, to be able to sit down and, and talk about everything, that's one thing that <laughs> everything is addressed in our program. You know, there's nothing that's ever swept un under the rug. I mean, no, no matter how uncomfortable it might, might be, we talk about everything and we put it out there. And I think that's why you don't see a lot of giant swings within our program over the past five, six, six years because we, we address it. We don't let so something boil over and then all of a sudden it's a five-alarm fire when you just had a spark to begin with. Uh, and then we have players that, because we do it as a staff, they'll address things in the locker room on their own. And it's not one player talking about another player or anything like that. So we don't let those things get to a boiling point. And I, I, I think that's just what's been established throughout our program. That's kind of what our, our, our culture is. Uh, it's not always easy to address things, but, you know, it's a lot easier on the front end than to wait. And then you've got Bianca, Jazz, and Dana, and Kylie. You've got upperclassmen that have, that have been a part of some, some pretty special things here that don't want this to end. So they're going to make sure everybody else is on that same page, too. Kylie Shook, one of ten semifinalists for the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year Award, and the only one from the ACC has Talk about that award for her and what it means. Yeah, I mean it's it's quite an honor uh, to be named one uh, one of the ten finalists for for defensive player of the year. And I think what she's done this entire year it's it's validated. Uh, and being the only one in the ACC, you know, we we have put her up for a ACC defensive player of the year, and I'm hoping that that holds true and that she, that she can earn that. Um, but, you know, we, uh, we still have two games left. So she's still got to perform these next two games also. But just she's been a huge, huge impact for us at the defensive end of the floor. When our guards get beat, she, she's there to help block shots. And, 
you know, the, the game she had against uh, Kunane at NC State was, was one of the best she's played defensively and offensively. So just really, I'm really pleased for, for Kylie. She, she's a great person, and uh, she's put the time in and put a lot of hard work into this, and, and I'm glad to see that it's, it's paying off for her. How important was it for Mikasa to kind of get that opportunity? It, you don't ever want Dana to go out, but you hand her the ball, and it's her car to drive, so to speak, and to be able to perform in that situation. No, it was really important because, uh, you know, she plays so hard. It's the one thing I never have to worry about. She competes. Um, but at times she just – I tell her, all because you're playing hard doesn't mean it's playing smart. Uh, but she's really starting to eliminate – some of the what I call fake hustle, where you dive after a ball that you know you can't get, and then it turns into a layup at the uh, other end, where the crowd's wooing and ooing because you dove on the floor, and I'm going, you had no chance to get this. Now they just shot a layup. So she's eliminating those, which is important for her game. But the number of extra possessions that she gets us in a ball game is remarkable. Her offensive rebounds, the number of balls she gets a hand on, uh, she just never stops working. And then I thought at Pittsburgh, she, she got the ball up the floor quicker than, than we have in the past probably seven, eight games. And that's because she used the pass instead of the, 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 uh, dri the, the dribble. And as she continues to work on her 15-foot shot, that, that's the one thing and only thing that I think is whole, whole, whole holding her back for being special. Because she passes the ball extremely well. She creates for others. And as soon as she can get that to be consistent, it, 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 it's, it's going to be really difficult to stop her. I was going to ask about that because when, you, when, you're, at, when you're missing two players, but you, yet you play offensively maybe a little better than you had been, what do they learn or what do you guys learn and how do you kind of take that moving forward? Because she did get the ball out of there really, really quick. No, she did. I, I, I think that's one thing we even talked about with, with Dana and Elizabeth you know, after the game and, dur and during the game is look how quick the ball's moving. When you move the ball that quick, you're going to get o o open shots, and then you have to make them. But we had more post touches on, on Sunday than, we, than we've had in a month, but it was because we got the ball reversed so quick, we were able to go inside, out, outside in and get some easy looks. Um, we pushed the ball. We got the ball below the free throw line in, tra in transition. We got a couple easy ones as our post ran the floor on ball reversal. It didn't stick in anybody's hands. And we, 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 we've got a pretty good group. If you give them open looks, I like our chances to make them. Anything else? Thank you, everybody.